In this episode, we're talking everything about Likas. A Lico is a fixture that uses an ellipsoidal reflector to reflect the light through the lens tube to focus the light. They are most commonly used in theatrical applications to achieve specific lighting. Today we've got a source 4, however the internals are consistent across the board for all Lico style fixtures. A Lico is made up of four main parts. Up here at the top you've got the lamp housing which houses the light source itself which can either be a conventional or an LED source. The next is the reflector housing which houses the reflector. Uh, it also includes a safety cable loop as well as the yoke to receive the clamp to attach the light to a uh, structure. It also has the barrel lock thumb screw on the back side. Next you've got the lens train itself which has got the shutters on it so you can shut the light down and bring it into your spot. It also has a gobo slot for the gobo holder or breakups and, and an accessory slot to hold things like a gobo rotator or an iris. On the back side of the lens train, there is the focus lock thumb screw. Uh, it can also go on the top side depending on your situation. Next is the lens itself, which takes two gel frames and has the lock right on top. Uh, it also has a degree marking on it that specifies what degree lens you've got. Now we're going to talk about replacing a blown lamp in our Lico. Uh, your first step is to loosen the thumb screw up here at the top. Once it is loose, you should be able to gently lift the housing up and out of the fixture. Your next step is to look at the guard down here that holds the lamp in. You're gonna squeeze the non-hinged side so that it comes free and then you can swing that guard up and out of your way. The next step is preferably with a set of gloves. You're gonna grab the base of this lamp and you're gonna wiggle it to pull it free. And straight up. Make sure not to slip and grab the lamp itself because you don't want to break that and have glass everywhere. You can grab yourself a new lamp, making sure that the wattage on this new lamp matches either what you want to put in it and is below the rating of the housing and they're usually on the side of the housing. Another thing to note is that the higher wattage 750 watt lamps, they will have an additional locating pin that you'll have to locate into some holes in the housing itself. So from there, you're going to take this, make sure not to touch the glass with your bare hands, and firmly push it straight down into the housing until it is flush with the housing itself. Then from there, you're going to take the guard, you're going to swing it back down, squeezing it once again until it goes back into its original place, double checking that everything's good. You're then going to take the lamp housing and put it back into the Leco, gently. Tighten down that thumb screw, and you're done. Now we're gonna look at putting a gobo in a gobo holder. For a steel gobo, you need to make sure you have the steel gobo holder, which is a lot thinner than its glass counterpart, which we'll see in a moment. Um, before we put it in there, keep in mind that these tabs are there and are designed to be bent outwards so that they will hold the gobo holder and make sure the gobo does not shift while it's in the fixture. After that, you're going to go ahead and spread the holder apart, slide the gobo in, keeping in mind that when you put this in the fixture, the gobo needs to be upside down and backwards to get it oriented correctly on the wall. Once you've done that, you can then slide the gobo into the fixture. For a glass gobo, we're going to use a glass gobo holder, which is the thicker version. Keep in mind that glass gobos have an orientation as well. Uh, the glass around the rim talks about this side towards the lamp and it's the reflective side towards the lamp. In order to put this one in the gobo holder, you'll take note that there is a, a ledge or a rim around it and that goes down against the gobo holder when it's set upright. You'll spread the gobo holder apart and you'll slide the glass gobo in until it falls into its spot. You can then put a, a brass brad in here to make sure that it does not separate and the gobo stays where it's supposed to be. After that, you can go ahead and put that in the fixture as well. Now we're gonna take a look at how to focus the Lico and how the various parts work together with each other. The first thing is our tilt lock. Um, if you loosen the tilt lock, of course the fixture will tilt. The next one is your pan, which is up here, which is also actually your clamp bolt. Um, you want to make sure this is tight enough that 
just tight enough that it'll still move around uh, so that later on when we're done focusing it, you can tighten it all the way down. The next thing to look at is our shutters here on the sides. Um, keep in mind that they're opposite from the pool of light on your stage or your wall. So the right hand one will adjust the left hand side of your pool of light and vice versa. Top adjusts the bottom side of your pool of light and bottom is also vice versa. So now we've got a square. We're gonna open this back up and we're gonna take a look at uh, gobos. So here we've got a gobo that I've already put in my gobo frame. It goes in upside down and backwards into the gobo slot, which is the slot closest to the frame. You slide that down and in. However, you'll notice it's a little bit crooked on our wall. So the next thing to t keep in mind and look at is our barrel rotation thumb screw down here in the bottom of the fixture. You're gonna go ahead and loosen that. Then you can twist the barrel to straighten our logo up. Okay. The other thing you'll notice is it's just ever so slightly out of focus. A couple things to think about is you wanna let the gobo heat up. Now that it's in the path of the light, that gobo is going to get hot and it's gonna flex a little bit. Usually you wanna let that warm up a little bit, let it flex, and then you'll focus it using your focus thumb screw up here. So you go ahead and loosen that, and then moving the barrel in or out changes your focus. You'll get it into focus, and then you'll go ahead and tighten this thumb screw. It can be a little finicky because it's kind of hard to hold it and tighten the thumb screw at the same time without it moving. That's the basics of a steel gobo and the Leco itself. Now I wanna cover the differences in Leco lens sizes and degrees. The one on the right hand side is a 19 degree EDLT and the one on the left is a 26 degree EDLT. You'll notice the one on the left is a lot bigger than the one on the right. That's because the 19 is a lot tighter of an angle and the 26 is a wider angle. Uh, it also depends on your distance from your subject or your wall in this case. Uh, I can actually make this 26 look like the 19 by bringing the 26 closer to the wall, which will bring the, tight, the, the pool of light in tighter. Um, so keep in mind when you're looking for lenses, uh, your distance and the size of pool you're looking for. Uh, it's a good thing to mention that there are many online utilities that uh, help you out with that, where you can punch in your distance from your subject as well as your pool size. The other thing I wanted to cover was the difference between EDLT lenses and non-EDLT. I'm gonna go ahead and take this one out. I'm gonna swap it for a 19 degree standard, which will match our other fixture except in the fact that it's a non-EDLT. Uh, by the way, in practice, you would put the thumb screw back in. For demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and skip it. As I bring this into focus, you'll notice it doesn't ever quite get as sharp as our EDLT does. And it doesn't matter how much you mess with it, you're never gonna quite get there. You can get close, but it's never gonna match. And that's because of the internals of the non-EDLT are entirely different than the EDLT. The EDLT has a little better optics, a couple different uh, lenses, as well as a built-in donut. And in our industry, a donut is what you use in your gel slot in the front of the lens to filter out excess light that you're not wanting to include in your image. That's the basics of Alico. If you liked what you saw and if you learned something, go ahead and subscribe and leave a like for us. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. See you later.